score. Two pieces from one piece. Alright, I've reached a bit of an impasse. Well, actually, I did uh, really good here. I've learned how to sharpen a bit, and I turned a, a right hand turning tool from the South Bend's How to Run a Lathe, figure 63. Uh, I forget what page it's on. But anyhow, I got a really nice finish out of it. Tuned everything in here. I mean, this is. We're running good. Uh, but now I want to uh, start turning the taper for this because this is going to be my center for the headstock. But the problem is is to turn a taper of this length. I can't do it with a compound. I only get an inch of travel. Um, and to set up to turn a taper with the uh, set over method with the tailstock. I've got to have a. I got to do it between centers. You can't have that in the jaw. It's gonna. It'll wobble back and forth. So how am I gonna drive it? Um, I've reached. Where am I here? At uh, 9:65 is what I'm at. That's where I, where I stopped, on my finishing cut. And it's 9:38 is the dimit, the final dimension I was working for. So that'll give me a little bit of. Uh, left over to stick out I'm basically gonna turn uh, it's about three inches of taper this is four and a half inches I've cleaned out here so what I'm gonna do right now before I move anything is I'm gonna reduce the diameter here to be uh, something less than three quarters of an inch like this has a little uh, recess here I guess if you uh, were to drive it out because I've got to put drive it out of the uh, spindle and I don't want to mushroom that out and uh, change where the taper rides. So I'm going to put a, re a relief in here on the edge, say to 6,500 up for, I don't know, what are we here? Uh, uh, a sixteenth of an inch. So, say 125. So uh, for one two five, I'll come in and I'll reduce it down to point six five zero. All right, and uh, we'll go on from. All right. I may actually make that a little wider. Matter of fact, I will just for scale's sake. That other center is so much smaller. I'm going to go ahead and make this an eighth of an inch. That actually is 0.125. I was messed up in my math earlier. Measure twice, cut once. All right? All right, so let me ram this back in here because it's the only way, like I said. Okay, so watch here. No pressure, and I'm, I've got free movement. Well, I'm driving the gear, so it's not totally free, but now, uh, as I bring the, and this is a live center, I mean, you can see it's, it's not horrible, but, uh, some kind of a thrust bearing on it or something that could handle this load, because it stops spinning as soon as you put a little bit of, alright, that's as much as I can have and not feel like I'm straining the machine. Let me put some oil on it, oil on it.
three thousandths. Probably help if there was a little bit of lube on it. Got a place to set this. Let's set it there. Try five thousandths again with a little bit of lube. Wear eye protection. You get something shards of metal flying into your eye. It's not a joke. I rushed myself because I was on camera and I didn't think about it and damn if something didn't just fly right into my eye. There we go. I mean, my feed was a little too high for uh, for it because once I reduced that diameter down here, now we're starting to peel off a nice curly chip. You can see what I was turning earlier. They were coming off, but I, I didn't put a breaker onto this uh, bit, so. Yeah, you can see the chatter on the shoulder. <laughs> I didn't, I, I didn't dress the uh, edge of that bit up with a, a little diamond grinder that I got from uh, with my Gerber knife. That's all I have to sharpen that with. But it looks like we are at 75. Uh, Seven seventy-two. All right, seven seventy-two. I still got to come in another six seventy-two or one 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 twenty-two one twenty-two uh, to my goal. Pardon me. All right, and uh, these dials don't really move, and they're a little teeny tiny screws to thread in and out and so I'm not trying to loosen it and reset zero we'll just have to do a little bit of math last is on Yeah, we just touched off right there and that's at 50 so we got to come around at 50 again 72 will be our end point so there's 55 55 60 
65, 70, we'll lose it again. Five, eighty, eighty-five, ninety, Ninety-five, hundred, coming around to seventy-two, right? Or five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Oh, this little shoulder keeps getting smaller and smaller because of the angle on that right hand turning bit. I didn't account for that before I started turning it down. So uh, I'm going to have to dive in and make it out a little bit. I'll stop before I get to 72. I'll stop at, say, 65 and flatten it out. All right, 25. 30. 35, 40, 45, 50, so now I've come in an inch, or, uh, uh, let me check that, let's just see where we're at, I should have come in a hundred, Hundred thousandths, tenth of an inch, right? Got just the tiniest shoulder to work with. I really should have accounted for that. And that's, I did improper math. Because that's at 60. That's fine. I can stick with. It's not 60, because 60 would be right there. It's a tad under 60. We're looking at... A tad under 600. We're looking at what? Uh, six under. Six under. 594. All right. Measure twice, cut once. Apparently it didn't go too well. I took an extra five thousandths off, which is probably this is probably my issue. Five thousandths is not five thousandths. It's oh, you hear that? Nice surface finish. Um. Very nice surface finish. Um, it's not a direct reading or what do you, whatever you want to call it. Every time I advance this in, whatever my dial reads on the cross slide is uh, twice that in diameter reduction. So I'm down now to, for my little notch head, 581. 581 580 
So whatever, that was an inconsequential d dimension, but uh, at least I uh, learned something about what was going on here. Okay, so now that I have a register, there's already a center there. Let's knock this loose. I'm done with this setup, correct? Okay, now my plan, my plan, since like I said, I don't have a center to drive this, I'm going to put some pieces of cardboard or sh shim stock. I could cut up a piece of an aluminum can or something, something soft metal here, and uh, drive this center. And I need to skim it to true it. It's it's gnarled, Gnar gnarly on there. So I need to true this up to the center anyhow. So uh, we'll take the work out. We'll put the center in. We'll true it up. I've got to flip this and put a center hole on this side because there isn't one yet for this. I know it's tapered and this is probably not the safest way to go about things, but uh, yeah. got to grip it right out on the edge, right? I mean, the only place I can do this, this really is not the, I can tell this is not going to work, but I don't have many other options here. And you know what else? I'm going to have to create a dog because I don't have a dog big enough to go around that. All I have are these little, little ones. And they're not going to fit around this shaft. Ah, but there is a uh, tapped thread, threaded hole right here in the shaft. Maybe I'll utilize that in the process. So, I had to cut it off the other side, but... Maybe that can work as a uh, driving hole since it goes right through the center of the mass there. Alright, so I dialed that in. I thought my battery was dead. It did quit right when I pulled the indicator up, but uh, I had a time of it. Don't try to dial something in if you got something wedged between the jaws like that. It's difficult. <laughs> Especially if they're of different thicknesses. They better be shim stock of the same thickness on a three jaw chuck. Because it's trying to automatically center the thing. And it'll run out. So I, I took the shims out. I'll be cutting through that anyhow. So it's no big deal.